gather around. I have a story to tell. It's about people who have jobs, the self-employed, hustlers, and business owners. Of late, we've been having this conversation, and there are people who want to feel good about what they're doing. I understand that. If you do not have this situation where you could go on a trip to Italy, leave your business, and when you come back, it's still running. It's still making money while you have taken your finger off of it. If you don't have that kind of situation, you do not have a business. Let's just put that out there because there are many people, I'm about my business, I'm doing this. You have a situation of either being self-employed or hustling. You essentially have created a job for yourself, which is that's, that's great. That's an amazing thing. However, let me tell you the story. High grade hustling, the upscale garage sale. We had employees, we had trucks, we had leases, we had a warehouse, we had online distribution points, but it was just a very high grade hustle. Why? When my partner was diagnosed with cancer, when I got sick, the business stopped. If you have a situation where your business can't run without you, you're not a business owner. And I'm making this distinction because these comments that keep coming in, because I understand people, people want to feel good about themselves. Yeah, I started this business. Yeah, I'm hustling. I've, you know, upgraded my income in a few weeks. Let's, see, let's, let's go ahead and talk about the numbers too. Let's talk about the numbers. You can make 100K a year hustling. You can make 100K a year flipping stuff on Craigslist. You can make 100K a year uh, doing stuff on eBay. You can make 100K a year doing stuff on Amazon. You can make 100K a year with a successful YouTube channel. You can make 100K a year with a successful Instagram account. But if you stop doing what you're doing, they all fall down. These are jobs disguised as businesses. Kind of looks like a business, kind of feels like a business, kind of kind of tastes like a business. But when you look at it, it's not organized or set up like a business. This is where things become problematic. This is where things fall off the rails. This is where people run into problems because everybody wants to feel good about themselves. I had someone who had put this question, this comment under my video. Now, I thought I did a good job of explaining that I want you guys to get, yeah, you, 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 I want you guys to get into the 9.9%, which has an overall net worth of $1.5 million up to $5 million. This is the launch pad for future millionaires and billionaires. You set your kids up and you may even set yourself up, but you got to get in there first because you, you remove yourself from normal bills and car payments and credit car debt and student loan debt, you clean, you can make moves, you can sit down and ponder, you can come up with ideals. You can take time and run experiments. You are not relaxed because the people in the 9.9% .9 are working, but you have more options, you have more money. Be clear on that before someone puts on this comment. Just because you replaced your $11.50 per hour job with a hustle that now earns you $3,000 per month. You've moved the cheese. Once again. Yay. Congratulations. Wonderful. Ah, woo. You get a car. You get a car. Ooh. You've done something. But that ain't what I'm talking about. To be clear. To be distinct. For clarity. So you replace a job with a higher paying job. Congratulations. But that ain't what I'm talking about. Just to be clear, this is what happened to me. And I'm going to explain this. When I started GC Solutions, I was replacing my income with a similar income, except I was just now self-employed. That income allowed me to roll off into the storage auction business with some capital, with some money, because 
it was a job, it wasn't a business, I was self-employed, but I had a high income. I'm going to stick it. And I, I do this in love because many of you don't get it because, once again, replacing that $11.50 per hour job, replacing that $15 per hour job with a hustle that makes you $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 a month, you've done something, but that's commencement. That's the beginning. There ain't no final destination. And that's what many of you feel because now that you replace that $12.13 per hour job with an eBay hustle, with an Amazon hustle, with whatever you're doing, you now feel that you're business owners. You ain't a business owner. You're a hustler. You're a self-employed hustler, which is a good thing because that puts you in the position to move to the next level. The next level, you're making 20, 30, 40, 50, 100K a month. 20K a month is $240,000 a year. Just a little bit short of putting you in the 1% of income earners in the world. You make 25K per month, you're in the 1%. You, even after taxes, have enough money to live where you want, drive what you want, invest how you want, and save how you want. This is where things begin to happen. This is where the place, the things that begin to change. Because if you replace that $15 per hour job with, let's see, what is 15 bucks an hour? All right, that's 30 K a year. So you replace income of $2,500 per month. And let's say you double your income to 5,000. Here's a few problems. And I see it all over the business space, the hustler space, the self-employment space your income ain't consistent. So you might make $5,000, but you only make it for six months out of the year. So you really know better than that $15 per hour job. You're in the same economic space. And when, if you're in the same economic space, you can't escape. I say this in love. I say this to address mindsets. I say this to shape people up. Because what's going to happen is you're thinking that you're knocking the bottom out of it and she's bored and she's just moaning to make your ego feel good. That's kind of what's happening with this self-employment thing. If your business cannot run itself without you, you don't have a business. You're self-employed. Now, if you're a highly paid self-employed person, you could take the money and employ employees and you can put in processes and you can create stuff. I did that last year for my consulting business and I'm gonna do that again for my media company, but, 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 but currently I am self-employed. I have a few things that act like a business. I have Amazon affiliate, in, not Amazon affiliate, but Amazon Kindle income coming in. I have YouTube income coming in. And, even if I don't post any videos, that income will come in for maybe six or seven months, or maybe, maybe a year or two, just depending on how the algorithm is acting. So that's a lot of passive income. Uh, last year, when I was consulting, I made $110,000 passive income. But the passive income was because I was actively doing stuff. If you're not at that twenty dollars to $25,000 level with your hustle, you're going to run into some problems. Let's talk about me. I was consulting last year, making a lot of money. I don't have any debt. I don't have any bills. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm not saying this to boast. I'm saying that this is an economic reality for me to make the moves that I want to make. I have to run lean because I think one of the hardest things to happen, and this is why I don't date poor chicks, is if you say those words, I love you, and you got money, and she got needs, and you ain't throwing any money on those needs, then you don't love her, so then you got energy that you could be using to make more money going into fighting with her. She is actually lowering you. She's actually reducing what you can do because she sees that money and she wants a little bit. She ain't about enlightening you. She ain't about elevating you. This is why, like the chicks I date, they don't have money problems, so I don't have to worry about that. When you, as a emerging business owner. 
Because once you get to 20, 25K, you, you can start shaping up some stuff to create a sustainable business. Uh, once again, I stepped back from consulting the way that I was, because I will start that again. I'll talk about that toward the end of the video or the stream. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Just depends on how I feel. We need to get more people with the right education, the right verbiage, because right now you have a million and one people online screaming their business owners. They get sick, no business. They don't want to do it anymore, no business. They take a day off, no money. These are not businesses. Now let's talk about a job. Something I say that you should keep while you work on your side hustle, your hustle, your side business, whatever you want to call it. You say that. What is a job? A job is something that you have where you can actually get paid for doing nothing. I know a lot of you out there, I hear it in the stream, it's like, hey, I'm supposed to be working, but I'm listening to this stream. And they still gonna get paid their check. That doesn't work with self-employment. That does work with owning a business. Once again, I did not quit my job to jump into self-employment. And also to be fair, I was already self-employed so it wasn't a big transition because I was 100% uh, commission salesperson. There is a transition from going to getting a check, whether you work as hard as you can or you don't, you still get paid the same. That was a problem for me. That's why I stepped out here on this entrepreneur ledge. I wanna be paid what I'm worth. I need to be paid what I'm worth, but they ain't gonna happen with a job. Jobs are necessary and there are some people that's all they're gonna have in life. They're gonna be a very good employee. Now, hustling is kinda good and it's kinda bad. Most hustlers hustle unfocused. You ever see these Instagrams where I'm a preacher, I'm a beautician, I do hair, I'm a notary republic, I dog walk, you know, that there's like 18, 19 things they do. That is unfocused hustling. And it ain't good because that means you'll take money any way you, you can get it. Once again, that's not good because then you can't build a brand. And if you don't build a brand, it's going to be very hard to differentiate your business from everything else out there. Uh, in the stream the other day, someone put in there, man, that tip about wearing a T-shirt with my company name on it got me more business. These are the little things that separate a side hustle, a side business from a real business. Let's say you start, you know, I'll, there was someone in here who was like, hey, should I sell my car to get a truck? No, get a lawnmower, put that lawnmower in the trunk, go cut some grass. Take the money that you're building to invest in these new things. I will tell you a story about that. When I got out the military, I had this notion to cut grass. And I did exactly what this person wanted to do. I traded my car in on a truck got to the point, had great credit. But the deal just, the, the salespeople was like, man, you're busting, you're busting, you're busting, you're busting. I had a job. Actually, in the end, I had to take that truck back and I was glad because, you know, you know what I was doing? Because I was unfocused, I didn't know what I was doing. I drove through Buckhead and I put, you know, wrote down Cameron's Lawn Service on sheets of paper out of a notebook and stuffed them in mailboxes. Didn't know that was illegal. No one ever stopped me. But I was in a brand new truck with a lawnmower hanging out the back of it. I did this about for a week. No one ever called me back. After I take the truck back, this is when I started getting calls. <laughs> like a week or two after I took the truck back, call after call after call. So the lesson of that story is you must always be marketing and remember, there's going to be a lag time from your first marketing efforts, because if I had knew what I know now, I would have been out there every day and I could have started that lawn care business just from sheer hustling. But see, the thing is, many people just hustle and hustle and hustle, and there is no destination to the hustle. And this is where they go wrong. This is why to for many long term hustlers, it is almost the antithesis of who they are to start a structured and organized business. This is the catch 22. As long as they're hustling, they're making that money. They, they're doing what they want. They're living how they live. They're taking nice vacations. But see, here's a salient truth. One day, you're going to get old. And this happens with the ladies' men. They get old. 
They don't pull as much. The dick game ain't as strong. Well, what do you think is going to happen to you when you've hustled for like 30 years and developed a lot of bad habits? Now, all of a sudden, you want to try to start a business with 30 years of bad habits. It's going to be very hard. It's going to be very, very hard. But there's hope. If you start, and this is the formula, and we'll go through the five, the four mandates, economics, get your body together, get your mental and spirit together, then fourth is women. Everyone, well, not everyone, many people have got this completely reversed. Women, body, spirit, then business. Now, at this point, don't have any energy for your business because you spend 75% of your time on other things. So if you invert that process and put most of your money and time and effort into your business, it will pay dividends. Whether it's a business, it's a hustle, it's a side hustle. I just wanted to put this out here because I got people who just don't want to hear the three to five year deal. It's like, no, 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 I can't hear you. No, I don't want to hear that. Well, whether you want to hear it or not, it's true. And everybody that has become a multimillionaire, everyone that has become a, a multi-billionaire has gone through this process unless they were born rich. And even to some degree, they've gone through this process because they had money. But if you have money and you spend any money, you don't get more money, you end up broke. So I want you to think about this. What are you doing? Are you hustling? Do you have a side business? Do you have a brand? Are you making, you know, 20, 25 K a month? That's to me is the line where stuff just takes off. That's when you have excess money to invest in other things. You make a 25 K a month. You could do your own real estate deals. You don't need no hardcore lender. You just need a little game, a little salesmanship because you've got the money to actually do a lease purchase, the money to fix up the house and the money to pay the mortgage and flip it without having to talk to someone else, without having to beg somebody with some money. Someone that uh, put in one of the comments like, you know, you lost a deal when uh, you told them you were going to bring your team out. Come to find out there's a lien on that property. So I didn't lose the deal because I was bringing out the team. Well, yeah, I did. Actually, I did because they knew that I was going to find that out because I was doing my due diligence. But thanks for the tip. Because once again, I have the money to do my own deals. I don't need to go to the bank. I, I could do my own deals. Do you understand when you get to 25, 50, 60K a month, and then you start becoming an investor and you start doing other things outside of your normal business. Do you understand how powerful that is? Do you understand that? So once again, from the top, if you replace that 13 and $50 hour job, which is like 30, ain't even 30, it's 28 grand or 30 grand. Now you're making like 60 grand through your business. Congratulations. But like I said before, that's just the beginning. There ain't no end point. There ain't no destination. And a lot of you are coming at me like, yeah, I'm the man now. I'm the woman. You get sick like I did. Well, that business will go away. And you know these customers? They'll feel for you. They'll be like, oh, man, that is so bad. What's going on, gentlemen, ladies? It's a glorious, hot, hot summer day you know i want to show you something that's just kind of just blew my mind all right i uh filled up my tank right with 75 dollars and i wasn't bone dry i put that up there for a reason when i was at the gas station this guy who was self-employed he had a handyman on the side of his truck. This man said, I almost put $5 in it because that would have got me home. $5 in his tank. Five bucks. Then he just decided to go ahead and fill up half the tank. There was another girl at the same service station who only put 10 bucks because I went in to buy some convenience items 
and she gave the man a $10 bill and went out and put $10 worth of gas in her car. So that was two people in roughly three, four minutes, well, however long it took me to pump my gas. Two people who were not filling up their gas tanks and both their cars did not take premium. Now, I, I'm saying this, let me uh, jump into the screen real quick. Let me make sure that I'm in there. GDP 4.1. That should be popping up. All right. So we got this going down, right? Now we got this I'm GDP action, four point one percent to the screen. Everybody's quick. going on it. Sure Everyone's like saying it's good. great. GDP right? four point one. It's real. It should be popping up. We actually have four one four point one percent growth of GDP. GDP and GDP is everything so that everybody does. It's you and your down, hustle. Right? It's you and your side hustle. Now you and your got, business. I'm you and your job. Action. It's everything. One percent. Now everybody's going. This on. is happening. Everyone's like saying it's great. But what did I just right? tell you? Four point one. I just said it's real. That there were people. We and, actually and just most. I was only there. One percent. Maybe right. six Growth minutes. GDP and, and GDP I observed two people does. on a hustle, hot right? Friday hustle, putting business, less gas in it's their vehicles than their tank would now, hold because oh, money was tight. Like it's great. But what did I just right? tell you? There's what we're told and there's the condition of the people. And then there was some other folks there and I was just looking at folks and those are the two that I actually heard. I wonder how many more people are doing those similar things. I wonder how many more people are just skating by. It's Friday. It's payday for most people. Super echo. I don't know why that would be an echo. That is strange. Oh. All right. We'll get rid of that. Kind of, sort of. I am kind of, sort of mixing. It should be gone now. Now, I, I think I know what happened. But it should be gone. Yeah. It, it's a lot of stuff that they're trying to do. So, there will. I'm doing this without a safety net. Things will happen. But, you know, that's life in the big city. Now, the thing is, let's see. Let me do it again. Now, uh, no, I, I think I know see. what happened. Make sure. Is there an echo? It should be gone. Is there an echo right now? Yeah. I'm just it, testing It's a this. lot of stuff that they're trying to do. I know what happened. I got all kinds of stuff going on here. All right, cool, 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 cool. So what I'm, I'm beating on this is we, we've had so many conversations where people are saying they're business owners and before you can educate someone, everyone must agree when, what is what? We all must agree to the same terminology and verbiage. If I'm saying business owner, talking about someone that owns a business that has systems, processes, um, employees, that they can leave their business, take a trip, do nothing, stay home all day, and money still comes in. So how does that happen? How does that go down? You know what I'm saying? Because, let me make sure I hook this up. <laughs> it's, it's payday, everybody else day. I, you, know, you know what I'm, I'm getting into? Because with the condition of the people, and when I say the people, I'm talking about Folks who are not in that 9.9%. Everybody that's not in that 9.9% or kind of close is vulnerable. Even those who are in the 9.9% are vulnerable. And I, this person, I hit them up. I have got, I've got, you know, it's funny. 
whenever I have someone who says something like that and I hit them up and I was like, where's the receipts? Send me a website. No one ever does it. No one ever responds. They just get ghost. And I address that. I understand you want to look good. I understand you want to feel good. But facades are not going to help you move to the next level. Like all along, I've like had many variations of like last year when I was consulting. I had a business in some parts because some things happened when I wasn't here, but I was the main driver. Allow me to explain why I stepped back from that type of consulting and I'm going to go to this new type of consulting. I was the business. It, without me, it wasn't going to work. I've done this before, the storage auction business. The storage auction business kind of had some automation, but the most critical part, the buying, the logistics of it, I had to do. And when I wasn't doing that no more, there was no more storage auction business. So what I'm doing this time is going into building a business slowly. And I will be hiring employees, but it's going to be very, very different this time. It's going to be, I'm going to hire people who have certain type of skill sets that they would need to make this business hump. Like, okay, give an example of uh, what happened to me. Like, I think I talked about it with the t-shirts. So now I got to find a new t-shirt vendor. I got my designer. Um, there's a certain look, there's a certain feel I want on the t-shirts. But for me to make that happen, I have to stop doing what I'm doing, go out, because the thing is, if for all you folks who are working with creative people, you understand, they just have this difficult, time-consuming way of dealing with life. They want to make sure it's a good job. It's not that they're lazy or crazy. It's just they're caught up in their creative and they don't understand that the clock is ticking. So to make sure I got to go out here, I got to talk to them. I got to get a sample. And all this takes time. Once I work this process out and get more components, because my designers in Germany of all places, um, I'm going to farm this out. But once again, I got to work out all of the kinks to make this a process that works where all I have to do is sign off and improve stuff. That's it. I like that Gunge. They always get ghosts, man. They always talk that yippee. Yeah. And I said, look, don't put no more of this shit on my wall. Cause when, you know, cause see, this is the thing. Trolls will dialogue back and forth with you because do trolls don't care about a conversation. They just want to be heard. They just want some attention. They will say the craziest things. You come back, they come back. But very few people really want to have an open and honest conversation about success because they're going to hear some stuff they don't want to hear. And then it's just like, hey, uh, I'm out. Now, getting back to the GDP. We have all of this, this wonderful stock market, but people just saw this. I mean, how many times does that happen per day? That someone goes to a gas station and say, I'm going to put a fiver in it. I'm going to put 10 in it. I'm not going to fill up my tank because I got to budget my money. I want you to think just how bad it is when you can't fill up your tank. When you got to put five in it just to get home because you ain't trying to let that money go. This is the parallel economy and we're going to talk about this. Uh, since that is true, critics are deep thinkers about everything which, man, they, they get into their, their little space. So we're going to talk about segmentation because this is what's going on with the economy and make sure we have audio. We do. We do. We do. All right. This is how the.
the economy can be doing so well, but so many people are really sucking the big titty, the big titty with the stale milk. Economic segmentation. All right. So for those of you, you can hit those super chats because we're about to get into class. Okay. So let's talk about, and I'm going to include the 10%. All right, so this is going to be your billionaires at the top, your millionaires at the top, and then the 9.9%, which is 99% of the 10%. <laughs> it's kind of funny how that is. Because that, that's the reality of it. But this is the jump off point to get here and to get here. Unless you're just extremely exceptional. That this is where it is. All right. Now. Right now. The economy. Is booming for these people. And this is why. This group owns 75% of the wealth. And I would even venture to go seventy five percent to eighty five percent of the wealth in the world so you know, you thought I was going to say the United States no I'm talking about seventy five percent to eighty five percent of the wealth in the world there are twenty five hundred billionaires the largest concentration is almost six hundred in the United States so there's only six hundred of these dudes and dudettes and this is what they own. So the stock market, housing market, business market, the tax cuts, they live in large right now. Now, the 90%, the have nots, and let's say the top of the 90%, let's say, we'll say 5% of them are almost or or can be positioning themselves to jump into the 9.9%. So the top 5% of the bottom 90% can transition. But this is who this economic prosperity is hooking up right now. Everyone else is sucking wind. And here's another big signal and, I, and once again the real estate market in the United States are, is, 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 is slowing down and starting to crash across the United States. Houses are sitting on the market. Um, the one of the properties that I'm looking at that I made an offer on, it's been on the market 138 days. So this is what I'm seeing, and I've researched other markets. Now, why is this the case? Well, my good people, we're going back to that $5 in the gas tank. When you extrapolate across the spectrum of that 90%, there's a lot of people who fall in that spot and fall out. And what I mean is, that as long as things are humming in whatever they do, they can fill up their, their gas tank. They can go ahead, top it off, and not worry about it. But they slide in and slide out. And this is the hustlers. This is the self-employed. Remember, I said he was a handyman. He had professional signs on himself. He had to paint and all this other stuff. He is not consistently working in its summer. I've noticed this, that there's a lot of uh, 
like on my next door, the request for handyman and stuff is way down. People are not doing as much as they used to do. Interest rates are rising. Bitcoin is being propped up. The the current spike is based upon any of y'all do stock market and know about whisper rooms where someone to go in and pss, 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 XGT, they're about to do a merger and the stock price goes up just based on that whisper. That's what's happening with Bitcoin. But in the end, we slide into a recession. China's going to slide into a recession. And one of the bigger things that's been keeping Bitcoin high is the Asian markets. So if they slide in the recession, there's going to be less people to buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin's price is based upon demand. So we slide in the recession. China resides into a recession. Britain brings up a recession. Germany slides into a recession. There's just not going to be that many people to buy. And I mean, many people is like, well, we have a recession. Then Bitcoin is going to rise. Why? Gold's going to rise. You know why? Gold is a solid, safe haven asset. Gold is real. Gold, everyone knows what gold is, and you can literally go around the world and find someone to sell your gold for to for fiat currency. Silver. So this is going to happen. Now, when you're structuring your businesses, you got to take this stuff into account. Uh, this is something that I have not explained. Remember how I always talk about the season of summer, how it can be traditionally harsh. It could be um, a hard time. So I've just gotten used to it. Summer is planning, doing stuff. Now, this year, I didn't drop the way that I normally dropped. Like some summers, it's just like literally falling off a cliff. <laughs> it's just like boom. So it's gone down a little bit, but I did not fall off like I have in previous summers because I've been working on it. But this is because I'm trying to install best businesses practices. Invest in your business, have a solid, solid savings account, and don't spend a lot of money out your business. Like this summer, um, I've really not spent a lot of money, really don't need to, but I haven't because I like to spend money when I have money coming in. Uh, one of the things that I've trained myself to do is when money slows down or I don't have the money coming in I want to, I don't want to buy anything. It's easy not to get in trouble when you're not buying anything. Now, part of the hustler, let's talk about our dear friend, the hustler. There are many hustlers out there who've been hustling clothes, who've been hustling athletic shoes, who've been hustling, 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 right? They are addicted to hustling. And when you take someone who's been hustling for a long time and then try to put in business practices, you're going to have a fight on your hands because they're used to that quick in hand money. Um, like one of the things I'm going to do, like I've been talking about it, but, you know, I haven't really put out an offer for the consulting because I know most people are not going to be part of it. Well, there's only so many slots anyway. And this isn't like artificial scarcity. I can only talk to so many people. And Sunday, oh, with that, go below and what the, oh, that's funny. It didn't hit this one, but hold on a second. That is, I don't know why it didn't hit this, but uh, I will fix that real quick. Because uh, one of the things I'm doing is reducing the number of offers that I have. And here we go. I've just totally changed everything on every video today. So let's get rid of that. Get rid of that because it's humming. And it's hot. It's really, really hot. And uh, how do y'all like that bribe that Trump did to the farmers? That's all. That's just a he's uh, doing what many Republicans and GOP have accused the Democrats of doing. He's just trying to buy some boats. But a lot of those farmers, 
they are not really buying that. <laughs> They're like, uh, this ain't real. This is not going to help us. Okay, there we go. So for those of you who are cons uh, interested in the consulting, I'm going to put a link below because Sunday I'm going to send out an email uh, because we're going to start it August 8th. And I didn't really see the need to just keep pushing it when I knew we we're going to start August 8th. So we're going to start talking about that Sunday. So if you want the consulting, and I'll talk about that toward the end of this, go below and get on the consulting wait list. And I'll just send you the particulars of what's going down. Now, one of the things that is happening is people are becoming kind of itchy and a little jumpy. Let's take these farmers who Trump's trying to buy off. They're like, this is a big problem. And just wait. You heard it here first. Wait next year when people start filing their taxes. You're going to hear a lot of screaming. Because this, uh, this was a short-term gambit for you and you and you and you for the average person. It's a long-term gambit for people who own businesses. It's a long-term gambit. Uh, let's see. Well, well, essentially this is just getting ready for the midterms. That's all that is. But once again, looking at what's happening, we have tent cities and I'm not being racist. I'm going to say this the way that I'm going to say it to illustrate the point. Right now you can go on YouTube and you can just Google living in my car, living in the van, living in the bus. And you're going to see scores and scores and scores of white people who are doing this. Some of them have done it for a venture. These would be the younger millennial types. But most have done it out of necessity. Now, I say this because, you know, I don't believe that white privilege is the big boogeyman that everyone does. But if that's white privilege, that you're an college educated white person but you're living in your car what does that mean for people who are under that what does that mean for people who don't have those skill sets because they're working they have money uh one girl i was watching she was able to pay off her student loans in three years by living in her van she said I was paying like twenty five, thirty thousand dollars a year on my student loans. So they're making money, but many of uh, the millennials and whatever group that is below the millennials, they're waking up and they're realizing that if I don't get rid of this debt, it will be with me until I die. That's a scary, scary thought. So you got all these folks living in their cars, their vans, their trucks. Because that's the only way that they can make it. Now you have couples who are doing this. So you got all that going on during this roaring economy. It doesn't make sense unless you pay attention to the chart. Once again, the 10%, the billionaires, the millionaires, the 9.9% which composes 99% of the 10%, they're winning right now. Everything is going their way. They're taking multiple vacations a year. Their kids are in the best of the best schools. They got money tucked away for little Johnny to go to Harvard. They are winning right now. But this group, it's a little funky. And this is why Trump is in office. The Obama years economically were just as good and in one, two, three, four quarters better than what Trump's doing. But we still have this economic inequality. And that's why when you are hustling, as long as you're young, firm, teeth all shiny and everything, you're good. But one day you're going to get old 
And if you don't start building some assets that make money, you're going to be in trouble. Just like the player, a quote, the natural alpha male. Right now, they're young, muscles popping everywhere. They look good. I, I want to show you this conversation, but this is for disruptive male. I will give you an overview. Uh, the woman, she's about 33. Y'all, a lot of y'all would like her, especially you ass men, because she's got a big one, small waist, and humongous, humongous breasts. And that nice curly hair, so many of y'all like. She is a stunner. When she walks, she kind of glides, you know, that kind of stuff. But the thing is, she's a whore. I'm not making this up. She's a real whore. If she likes some dick, she's going to ride it. And lately, she's been having a problem because once dudes see that she's got other people, they be out because they get all up in their feelings because they want all of that for themselves. This is going to be happening to more people. The traditional ways of hooking up a partner are going away. The chick makes six figures. You got to come with more than penis game to get her. Now, she's been trying to get me, but she got those whole tendencies. I'm just her friend. I put her ass in the friend zone. There ain't no way I'm touching that. She likes variety. And I just told her, she's no, no, you know, you good. No, no, I ain't, I ain't. I'm not that egotistical, nor I'm that vain. I know what you are, whether you choose to admit it or not. I don't know, but. I know that you probably until you die are going to be on the dick carousel. And that's cool. That's your right. That's your body. You can do what you want. I'm just not going to be part of that situation. Because we've had that conversation like four or five times. But. You're going to have to have more than money. You're going to have to have more than a nice body. You're going to have to have game, 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 game. It's going to be required. It's not going to be optional because uh, women have evolved. They're not the they're not our aunties. They're not our moms. They're not our grandmothers. They're not our great grandma. These are a different group of women, and many men are. Because she even put in there, she's like, "Yeah, they've been doing this to chicks forever, and now all of a sudden the shoe turns, and all of a sudden they get up in their feelings." <laughs> there ain't no way they all are messing with that. Uh, so that's one of the things no 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 she no 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 honey bunny no she's a computer scientist she has a, a mba in computer science she makes money the legitimate way when i say she's a whore i mean she'll fuck anybody whenever she wants to oh no she's very professional that's kind of the, the reason that dudes want to lock it down. The way that she looks, she has a professional, she has a career. She don't have a job. She has a career. Uh, right now, she's like, she told me she's got like three recruiters after her. She can go anywhere. And they talking about fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 bonuses. Smart as she wants to be. This is why dudes are trying to wipe this up. No, no, she doesn't. She doesn't take money for her, 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 her juices. She don't take money for a milkshake. Man, I am not messing with Big Booty Betty. I've known this chick six years. No, she ain't a sugar baby. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are funny. All right. So let's. Uh, <laughs> All right, E. Hawthorne, your course has helped me get a second client. Thanks. Appreciate you. All right. So let's get into what we need to do to shape up these businesses. All right. So understand what I'm what I'm talking about is I want you guys to go. Let's do this in green. Well. There we go. Okay. Um, 
I don't like that color green. Yeah, that dark green. I want you guys to get in here. This is the launch pad. So everything we're going to be talking about, we're going to make sure you go here. Okay. So from hustling to real businesses. All right, so the first thing you need to do, you need to create a brand. First, first thing. Regular web guy, I dated girls like that, like them. They don't need much of my time. No, they just need the penis, man. Pinpoint accuracy. Glendon's speaking facts right now. Some women have what the church would call a Jezebel spirit. No matter how much class education they have, some women just love variety. That's who she is. Oh, she already has kids. Oh, yeah, that was a little disruptive, Mel. But now we're back to... Every man is a millionaire. All right, so first thing you got to do is brand. So what this is, uniform. And this isn't that this isn't that expensive. You can have branded shirts and stuff made up. You need a, a mission or I'm going to call it the marketing statement. Uh, wrapped video uh, not wrapped video wrapped vehicle if you're in the service business this is super important and this is a step that a lot of dudes and do that's miss uh this furniture in my office it was because a vehicle was wrapped that i called them and they got the business i wouldn't have known i wouldn't have got i wouldn't call them anyway so if you're like doing lawn service, pool repair, um, whatever you do, if you're in the service business, your vehicle needs to be wrapped. That can be as little as 400 bucks up to a few thousand, which is tax deductible. So we got to go to the brand. You need colors, you need uniformity, and you need consistency with your brand. Number two, you need processes. This is what I'm in the middle of doing for the next group of employees I'm going to hire. There has to be a standard operating procedure, SOP, processes, best practices, whatever you're doing. Like, okay, let's, let's just go ahead and say you, you have a lawn service company, right? And you have three or four employees. Maybe let's let's just keep it small. You have you and another group, and you have two trucks. Best practices would be every day your guys wear a uniform. Every day, and this is one of the things that you can get away with. There's very few guys who do this, but here's some game for you who are in the lawn service. If you have your employees shave every day and there's a legal way you can make them do it it's called an employee handbook so if everyone has to shave they have to shave so if they shave they keep their hair cut uh, they have a professional shirt on and if you want to up your game you get them some business pants and if you want to really up your game they, they all wear the same shoes that will separate you from virtually every other lawn service out there and when you brand yourself, when you uniform yourself, you can charge more money, like way more money for the same services. Well, one of the things that happens is it's happening in Washington State. It's happening in California. It's happening in New York. What happens in those is going to filter down to the rest of the country. Because many countries and many cities are, have what I call a wealth zone, where all of these, uh, let's say, 
wherever you guys live, what's the wealthiest part of town? Put that in the comments. And if the wealthy part of town has like a broke or less wealthy south side, the east side, the west side, what they're doing is succeeding from those larger municipalities and taking all their money and creating a super municipality. They're taking their money back and it's night and day difference between these two parts of town, even though they're in the same county. Who is Nico? Anyway, so processes. So you, you have that. And then this is another process. So, so first you got the uniforms. Then you have your guys do this each and every time. You have them leave a handwritten note. All right, I'm going to actually draw it. I'm going to have to write really small. Come on, there we go. Hi, this is Alex. I cut your lawn today. If you have any problems or don't like the service, give me a call. Thanks for the business. And put that where you know they're going to get it. Like many people don't use their front door. So you got to kind of figure out what they use. Uh, if you have a good, real, you never know with people, but one of the things you can do is have like a little packet or something or actually tape it, you know, and this is a process. Tape it to their mailbox tape it to the outside so they have no what they see and it's like hey this is alex cut your grass today thank you very much for your business if you have any questions i have a phone number on that that is going to get you extra business because this is what's going to happen someone's going to be over at their house it's like yeah your grass looks good who cut your grass oh alex did you need your grass cut well, her here's his number processes systems because all these little things you do in your business will get you more business if you systemize and process them, process, you know, create them as a process. This is the difference between hustling and the real business. These processes can literally triple 10x. Well, I'm, I'm doing that completely wrong. See, I'm slow because I almost deleted all this. But they can 3x your business, 10x your business, or 100x your business. This is what processes can do for your business. Oh, this is what the consulting is going to be about because many, most people have not gone through any professional training. And I'm telling you, I had a long guy. He didn't do this. If you go ahead and drill this into your, your guys that they do this consistently over and over again, because, all right, so let's say you don't have a wrap truck. So you're, you're cutting grass, right? Oh, man, they, I need my grass cut. There ain't no number on the truck because you're trying to fly under the radar because you hustling. Hmm. They ain't, you know, unless they really need their lawn cut, they ain't going to get out and talk to you. But I guarantee you, if they, oh, take out that phone and call you when they need you. The difference between hustling, because hustling is kind of rooted in not being a part of the system. So you intentionally cut your money because you don't want to be part of the system. So when you open up yourself, you, you file your LLC, you wrap your vehicles, you're all out there. You can literally own a block. And this is something else I don't, I don't see lawn people do. After you cut the grass and, you, you know, once you're rolling, you should get someone in there who's going to be a door knocker. Hey, this is Alex with uh, Cameron's Lawn Service. We're cutting your neighbor's such and such yard. Not to say you need your yard cut. It looks great. But if you ever need us, here's my card. And have your cards 
where they have a little magnet on it so they can stick it on the refrigerator. Now, if you do that, you go in a, uh, a cut, a, a cul-de-sac, and there's like, say, 20 houses in there. You're going to get five or 10 of them just doing that. You may get all 20 of them doing that if it's a particular neighborhood where people don't cut their own yards. There's so many ways you can do this. <laughs> Shaking hands, kissing babies. That's funny. Um, e. Hawthorne, yes, getting your, your car wrapped is tax deductible. Uh, Thomas Dickens, I can see the difference. Large-scale lawn service have same color trucks and trailers. All kinds of things. Now, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Because... Most lawn services don't have a marketing department. You have a marketing person who is designing these rules and processes, putting them together and making sure that people stay on point. Because if you have a lawn service and you have Leroy, Juan, they ain't used to this. More likely, they're going to quit or you're going to have to fire them because they're just not going to do it. So you're going to have to bring new people in and get them indoctrinated with the corporate philosophy and you could be killing it. So that that's just some of the game. Uh, this is what I'm going to be doing on the consulting. And this is why you need a business because I'm just going to break it real. I had someone when I was doing the free calls call me and they had two websites. They had no money. And it's like, what can I do to make money with this? They didn't do any audience research. They didn't have market research. Essentially, it was literally tear down and rebuild, which would be cool if they were had some money, but they didn't even have any money. And one of the things that I find to be interesting on the internets is everyone thinks that they can do all these businesses with no money. If you're super, 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 super talented, okay, yeah, super, super creative, all right. But if you're a regular person, no. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. That's pretty much it. Because because if you consistently set a goal to, all right, I cut, you know, set up where you cut every yard in that subdivision, then the economies of scale kick in. You spend less gas and you make more money. It's all kinds of stuff. Uh, double trouble. I have a job in the business, slowly building, very slowly, and undertaking more training. And this is why it's good to start small. John Doe, I don't even know what you're doing. I mean, I'm kind of like, I'm shooting in the blind. I don't know what you do. I don't know what market. I, I have no idea. Uh, once again, I'm telling you that the difference between a hustle is like a difference between a suit and a T-shirt. That's what this stuff does. And so, you know, you can, you can look good in your T-shirt, but you're going to get more business in that suit. Man, I can't break them Hebrew laws for cutting my beard, but I can cut it low, though. <laughs> once again. Name the last president that we had with a beard. We've had a few. Not in this century. Name them. No. So that, that's part of it. All right. So back to the lesson. All right. So now you got processes. Now we're going to get rid of this note. The big thing. Legal structure. This is going to be huge. All right. Let's say you are Alex the lawn man. 
No, actually, there was some, but well, after Lincoln, not many. And you you got this business, you got trucks, you got lawn equipment, and it's all in your name, and you can write it off. However, it's going to be hard to do the things you can do with an LLC, and I will give you an example. Because a lot of people think this is overkill, but they don't know what I know. All right, so we'll get rid of that. Get into the legal structure. All right, so you have a holding company and an operating company. which is owned by this company. Now, why do you do this? I mean, you could just go ahead and start as a sole proprietor. Well, two things. This holding company, which you could start today, time helps it. Okay? So time helps it. So the sooner you start this, the better. Now, this owns this operating company. All deductions, losses, and profits flow up to the holding company. Now, once you get this structure in place, you're going to start spending money totally differently than you do now. Because with this structure, you can spend money, enjoy your money, and save crazy money on your taxes. Because, see, I'm going to say this again. Come this next tax season, a lot of people are going to be mad. A lot of people are going to be upset. A lot of people are going to be raising holy hell. But you, if you have your LLC, part of setting up an LLC is also setting up a spending tax plan, which will dictate your moves. Because you can spend in a certain way that you pay virtually no taxes. Which would be hard to do with a sole proprietorship because... If you take it, because essentially this is separate from you. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with this. But, and this is something else too. So let's say Alex has this lawn service. All right. Then Alex notices that a lot of people are not getting their gutters cleaned. Now, many people would go ahead and roll this into the lawn service, right? Bad idea because Alex Lawn Service and we do gutters. It's clunky, and what's clunky, the mind doesn't recognize. So Alex would go ahead and create a gutter company, turn one vehicle into the gutter crew, have this other LLC, and have a separate business follow all of the best practices the uniforms and everything but instead of alex's lawn service it'll be alex gutters now let's look at the beauty of this alex already has trucks he already have people he's just gotta re you know wrap this vehicle a little differently brand it and get his marketing team on calling people and figuring out a way to reach these people so now alex has two businesses Versus one business that does two things. Alex now has more deductions. Alex has more options. So Alex is in the business like five years and he notices that, hmm, a lot of people want their yards treated. He would go ahead and create another business. You ever notice how there's some businesses, all they do is fertilize yards. They don't cut. That's all they do. So you would create Alex, uh, Alex's um, fertilizer. You do that. So now Alex has three businesses, three different brands. And all of a sudden, people see these trucks. Alex's lawn service. Alex's gutter services. Alex's fertilizer. Alex must be some big stuff. Let me call up Alex. Because by branding your service to yourself and treating yourself this way, 
you make yourself look way bigger than you really are. Alex could literally have three to four trucks, but he looks like he's got a fleet because people are seeing all these branded trucks around here with his name on it. That's how you win the game. Oh, I'll get into that in in the course. Yes, each business has its own LLC. Many people will say, wow, why do that? It's complicated. You're going to create additional filing stuff. Not really. Not really at all. You get one account, they'll do it all for one set fee. Home pressure washing, you can go into many different things. But see, the reason that you want to segment, and this is the topic for the day, is what's going to happen is one business is going to do way better than the other. So what do you do? It's like, okay, since this business is doing so much better, I'm going to move people from here and take your best people, move them over to the new company. Now, why is this so cool? Because it's Alex's Lawn Service, Alex Gutter Cleaning, Alex's uh, Fertilizers, Alex Pressure Washing. There is a chain of command. Now someone who can come work for you is like, well, you just won't be a, a worker drone. You could be a salesperson. You can, and the thing is, all your salespeople start off as technicians so they know the services that they're selling inside and out then you move them up to the sales people where they can make more money so all of a sudden this little company has a path for progression versus just dead-end jobs this is what you can do and that's another point that I brought up by segmenting your businesses you segment your risk so let's say uh, Alex pressure wash. No, let's say the gutter. Say some one of Alex's employees falls down, breaks his back, and he sues Alex. He can only sue the gutter company. He can't sue these other ones. Appreciate you, Doug, for the five dollars super chat. Yeah, I mean. This stuff is not, quote, rocket science, but it's incredibly hard to consistently do. That's one of the problems with this. So one of the things that we're going to do, and for anyone that wants to be part of the first class of folks who are going through the consultant program, uh, what I'm going to do is it's going to be more hands on. I'm going to talk to you. We're going to work some stuff out and I'm going to guide you. But I can only do this to so many people. So let me go into this because I want to stay on point. Male chimp. Come on, baby. Really? You're treating me so bad. You know, now all these websites log off. <laughs> oh, God. And everything, you know, has like triple and quadruple um, security. All right, hold on. Seven, zero, six, two, seven, seven. All right. So let's go into this because I haven't really sent out any emails this week. It's been a busy, busy week. Uh. Make sure that I'm reading the same thing. I got too many windows open. Okay. So, matter of fact, here we go. Let me make sure. I'm going to say this. Is there any echo or reverb or anything? It should be gone, but I'm going to check this out. Thank you, King Nick, for the $2 Super Chat. Thanks, Thomas Dickinson, blessing, blessing the collection tray as well. All right, so was there any reverb or anything when I switched over? Just make it sure. I'll hang out here for a second. Yeah, because essentially, 
the hardest part about building a company is sticking with the processes because they're not sexy. All right, cool. Awesome, 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 awesome. They're not sexy. And you need someone to consistently push the message and the branding. All right. Uh, let me just read this. I'm going to start one-on-one -on -one consulting services again. These services are designed for business owners or people who make over 90K a year. I have many of you seeking ways to contact me. Thanks for the love. This is how we're going to do it. First of all, it will be structured and measured. What does that mean? We will measure where you are, then increase your pace and results. First of all, we got to figure out where you are and what you're doing. If you're doing good stuff, there ain't no point in changing it. But if you ain't doing good stuff, we need to change it. So that's the first thing we have to do. Uh, first mandate, y'all all know what that is. Every man needs his own business or a seriously strong side hustle, minimum four figures per month. All right, so what we're going to get into, like um, for the 3000 you can pick three of these. You can get disruptive estate planning, disruptive online business development, online marketing, or, you know, you can mix them up. And what we will do is we will be working together I'm probably going to do six weeks for the first one, then go down to four weeks. And we're going to work on your business. We're going to work on things you need to do. And then for people who want the enhanced services, 2550. Uh, this will be short term. You know, we're not going to get on where you're going to be locked into a long term contract because pretty much we should be able to get you where you need to be going in six weeks. Uh, there will be daily assignments. There'll be things you'll have to do. And also, once I get this rolling, what I'm going to do is hire an accountability person. That's going to be one of the first hires. Now, this person is going to be kind of like my assistant. All right, three month minimum commitment. All right. So, yeah, that's going to be it. I may change that for the first one. I might. I have a feeling people are going to like it so much that they will. Uh, They'll stick around, but I'm not going to hold anybody that we're going to go with six weeks for now. And you, you know, this in video, I'll just put that in the language. So, and what I'll do. Yeah. The first term six weeks will be 3000. That's how we'll do it. And then we'll work on your business. Just because the thing is like what we just did for the lawn service. And I can only handle 15 to 20 people. I'm thinking it may be closer to 15, but I'm going to try it, see how it works. Uh, what we're going to do for your business is what we did for Alex's lawn service, because there's so many different ways that you can do it. Let's say you have an online business. It's totally different than a physical service business. So, but you still need to brand. You still need to do certain things. Uh, thank you, Charlton, for the $20 super chat. Sensei Snowden, thanks for the five bucks. So that's how it's going to work because um, once I get a few people and get their businesses tight, because once you start doing this, and then we're going to talk about legal structure, we're going to talk about how to pay yourself. That seems to be a, a big, big question. I actually don't recommend paying yourself, and we're going to talk about a way that you can get your business to fund a lot of stuff in your life where it's actually a legitimate business deduction and you really won't need much money out your business. This is how we're going to play this game. So go below and get on the consulting wait list if you feel this is going to be something you would like and I will start sending out emails Sunday. Sunday will be the day. And then uh, I've got the seventh. It's already full. And so the next day is going to be the eighth. And then once that's full, it'll be the ninth. And we will be talking and working stuff out and working one on one on your business. Because there's a lot of you who have all kinds of stuff going on. All right. So hopefully you enjoyed this. If you like it, you should be super chatting and. Let me see. 
Let me see what kind of special I can throw up in here. Give me a second. Because I wasn't going to do this, but it's Friday. So why not? Why not? All right. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Give me a second. I'm going to do a bundle. Hmm. All right. So what is the price of this? Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Make sure. All right. What I'm going to do is just get away from the coupon thing. I'm going to, and it's going to be very short term, probably just until in the morning because I'm going to get this thing started. So we're going to make it it's 50% off, but you don't have to use no coupon. And I'm going to leave it like this until. 5 yeah 5 p.m. tomorrow so the links already below for anyone who wants to really get started on this you can go ahead and get the never broke action pack plus what I'm gonna do make sure that we are in the same place let me look at it all right. Just from five, five fifteen today to five fifteen tomorrow, you can get the Never Broke Action Pack for fifty percent off, and I will still include the two to three conversations, but this is going to end at five p.m. tomorrow. So once again, the Never Broke Action Pack is fifty percent off. And there's no commitment and none to that. And we'll talk two or three times about your business. How's that for a deal? No promo code and none to use. The link is below. All right. So get in there. Cool. All right. What I'm going to do. So anyone has any questions? For speak now, forever hold your peace. They say that walk seems so hard to follow Why you not a role model? Only your teacher teach them when the school's out Preach a man preaching to each his own Mano we mano Fly away, fly away
fly away with me It's time to fly away Fly away His blood set me free It's time to fly away While I'm slipping like an absent thought Roller play skipping, skidding along the top of Nova's Ark Cypher, holy yacht, me and my people think we know it All flow in suspenseful poems, suspenders in every word Wearing overalls, overdosing, trained as a locomotive Conductor of commotion, controlling the road we on I know we are, I remember being so high I didn't know that the low could unfold Sleeping with eyes of gold Oh no, I am just blessed with a fire in my soul Though at times it might die down Yahweh fan the flame, let it grow As we fly away, fly away Fly away with me, it's time to fly away Fly away His blood set me free, it's time to fly away Fly away Fly away with me, it's time to fly away Fly away His blood set me free It's time to fly away Fly away with me Always trying to holler, not a lot Change sense, stand, but they don't want these problems 